Welcome to the South Concourse of McLean Stadium in front of the RG3 statue. It is time for this week's Big 12 breakdown as we enter week 11 of the college football season. Sports director Curtis Quinlan alongside the voice of the Bears, John Morris. Hello, Hello. Curtis. John, if the season ended today, the Big 12 is playoff bound and not in crimson and cream. Ooh, how about that? TCU number four, number four in the CFP poll, and I think deservedly so. And that's pretty cool. I mean, they just keep on winning, and they took advantage of what Tennessee losing uh, and Alabama losing yep. again. So good for TCU. Alabama lost again. Clemson lost. Yeah. And Tennessee lost. And I think people have just started realizing, yes, TCU does have a luck component to it, like the Ken Palm metrics in uh, college basketball. You know. TCU's played one healthy starting quarterback yeah. for 60 minutes over the course of conference play. It was JT Daniels at West Virginia. They did knock uh, Baron Morton out of the game Saturday in their win over Texas Tech. But, you know, you just have to beat who's in front of you. You right, can't control right. any of the rest of it. And TCU has done a really remarkable job, nine times in fact, of just beating whoever was in front of it. Exactly. 9-0, and and, you know, they don't ask how. They just ask how many, you know, at the end of the year. And they've had to come from behind in a lot of those games, but they've done it, so give them credit. You have to really give them credit for doing what Boo Corrigan wanted them to do and figure out, you know, a way to play from behind for shorter periods of time, especially than Clemson and Tennessee and Alabama now on the season because yeah. all three have now finished games behind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, you look at the Big 12 schedule for the coming week, and then we'll get into our Week 10 recap. Is this the biggest week of the season so far? It's a huge week. It huge. is, and isn't it funny? We've said that. I mean, there have been several weeks with some great matchups uh, up and down the lineup, but this one may be the best of all, and isn't that fun? When you get to November, meaningful games up and down the, the uh, slate in the Big 12. You know, you look at some of the uh, at the three night games. One of them is attracting college game day, fourth time that the conference has been featured on uh, college game day this year. And then the other night game, Big 12 title game spot potentially on the line. Yeah. And then the third one, a possible bowl bid on the line. <laughs> I'm not going to call it an anxiety bowl, but, you know, I think this would be kind of a stressful math test. Yeah. Very much so, uh, and just some great matchups again this week for Baylor playing at night here against Kansas State. We'll talk more about it, but am I right? It's Baylor's first home night conference game since Kansas State two years ago. A walk-off 32-31 win. Yep, yep. John Mayers with, <laughs> with the boot to win it. Their only two wins that season came at home against the two Kansas schools. Yep, yep. So first nighttime conference game since then, and the only other one before that, do you, or the, the most recent one before that, do you remember it? Conference game or non-conference? Con conference game. Uh, no, tell me. Oklahoma, 2019. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. So <laughs> uh, tickets still available. Shockingly, this is a big game. Yeah. Uh, Six o'clock kickoff Saturday night. We'll get into the matchup in just a bit. But, John, let's start with, as we always do, our Week 10 breakdown here on the Big 12 breakdown. And we start in Fort Worth, number seven, TCU 34, Texas Tech 24. Uh, yeah, Tech had a lead into the fourth quarter, but you wouldn't know it looking at the final box score. Not at all, uh, and give Tech credit. I think they, they played the best that they could, you know, against yeah. TCU, stayed with them for a while. TCU, like they've done in several games this year, pulled away late and had another win. Uh, moving on to Norman, where it was Baylor 38, Oklahoma 35. The Bears get their second ever win in Norman, first one since 2014. Um, interesting, you know, talking before this off camera, you and I were, Different takes on the defense. Yeah. This is probably, to me, one of the more impressive defensive results simply because of how dynamic Dylan Gabriel is and the fact that you're never going to stop Dylan Gabriel from getting big plays. Right. But they limited him as well as anybody has that's played Oklahoma this year. Yeah, and my thought is that they almost took a step back defensively from the performance against Texas Tech. Now, factor in, Dylan Gabriel, much more dynamic quarterback than yep. any of the three that we saw for Texas Tech. And the offensive line for Oklahoma, I, I think, is better right now than Texas Tech's also. So factor that in. Yes. But the guys up front, they just didn't get the pressure. They didn't get the push that we saw with six sacks against Texas Tech the week before. So I, I'm not saying that the defense took a step backwards this right. past week, but I'm saying they kind of leveled out, you know, kind of plateaued for one week while the rest of the team continued an upward tra trajectory. And, and you hope that that's a one-week thing and not a right. trend, right, because this right. week's game will be one up front. And listen, and Oklahoma's good, too. I mean, that's a good team. That's a really good win for yeah. Baylor to go in there and win. And, uh, you know, they, but they've got to play better, even better than that. They've got to play better this week. 
Moving on in the Big 12, Kansas 37, number 18, Oklahoma State 16. Garrett Rangel gets the start over Gunnar Gundy with Mike Gundy, Gunnar's dad, even yeah. saying after the game, look, Garrett had the better week of practice, so Garrett got the start. Uh, <laughs> but the Kansas Jayhawks are headed to the postseason, yes. John, in football yes. for the first time since 2008. I don't even care that it's the first time they beat my alma mater in 15 years yeah. anymore. How about that? Last year, am I right, uh, Kansas lost to Iowa State and Oklahoma State by 50-plus points uh -huh. each. This year they beat both of them, beat both Iowa them. State and just beat Oklahoma a State. A historic year in yeah. Kansas. Yeah. Uh, they tore down the goalpost. Yeah. And did you Saw see that. the most brutal tweet <laughs> I've ever I've seen this season? No, I don't think so. Uh, so remember back to when Tennessee beat Alabama for the first time since Nick Saban arrived in Tuscaloosa, and there was a GoFundMe that was tweeted out to replace the goalpost <laughs> at Neyland Stadium. Well, Kansas tweeted a picture of the replacement goalpost already up in the south end zone oh, yeah. at David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium, and said the caption was simply, no GoFundMe needed. Ah, that's good. That so is good. The Jayhawks, whoever put that tweet up, we bow down to that's you. That's very good. That was a very, very good tweet. Uh, this Kansas team's legit. Very much so, and uh, great to see that they're bowl eligible. I texted uh, Brian Haney and David Lawrence, you know, mm -hmm. their guys, uh, radio guys, and I said, can you make room in your basketball schedule for a bowl game? <laughs> <laughs> they said, absolutely. So, Is this troubling for Oklahoma State? They're a very, very different team without Spencer Sanders healthy. Boy, they are, aren't they? And, and when we heard, we were kind of watching before our game to see if Jalen Daniels would start at quarterback, right. you know. Um, and, and really, I thought Sanders was okay. I thought he was going to be okay for that game. But when we heard that, that was kind of the, you know, the, the tipping point, if you will, you know, with him not being able to play for Oklahoma State. Right. That's a, that's a huge loss, one that yeah. I can't – I don't know that I can comprehend how big of a loss it really is yeah. as, a, as an alum. Um, but I don't think I would have thought this a year ago. Right. Because this is the – truthfully – the biggest improvement we've seen in Spencer Sanders in college is in 2022. And he went from just decimating Baylor's defense here yeah. in Waco to Played great. injured at the end of the month and missing the first game in November. So a very precarious situation there that takes Oklahoma State out of the Big 12 championship game race. Uh, and a month ago, they looked like the favorite to get in. Exactly. When they left Waco, I thought they were the best team. I think they were the best team in the Big 12 after they came through here and won this game here. Now, TCU's been there all along. Right. I just wasn't giving them enough credit you and me both. until recently. But, uh, yeah, but for Oklahoma State, that's, that's a precipitous drop for them. Um, Iowa State 31, West Virginia 14. The streak is over. Iowa State has won a Big 12 Conference football game. And did I say last week, Iowa State's going to beat somebody. Iowa State's going to beat somebody. <laughs> and they did. And that was what uh, – that was a game that you and I agreed on. Okay. And for the first time this season, a game we differed on, I was right. So I'm going to There I'm you go. Pat myself on the back for that what one. Was that K State I had, Texas? I had Kansas over OSU. Oh, okay. Because of spent the unknown with Sanders. Gotcha. And like you said, thinking Jalen Daniels would be back. Yeah. Um. So, I, if you're West Virginia, how, what's what do you take away from that game? Because yeah. up until the last couple of weeks, Iowa State simply couldn't score. Right. That's Iowa State's highest scoring output in Big 12 play. It is its second highest scoring out, or it's tied, I think, for the second highest scoring output of the season. Yeah. They scored 43 against Ohio of the MAC. West mm -hmm. Virginia is not a MAC team. Right. Uh, tough loss for West Virginia. Neil Brown, I've told you before, I really like him. Uh, but, man, they have just uh, sort of regressed. They've got the win over Baylor, you know, as their yeah. only conference win. But it seems like they've just sort of regressed and, and been in games for the most part, but haven't been able to find another conference win. Right, and following along with this one, it just never felt like they were in this one. Right. They, the, the, you know, Iowa State would get the gap pretty wide. West Virginia would chip a tiny bit away, and then Iowa State would start pulling away again, and West Virginia would chip a tiny bit off of it and just kind of felt like it did that for 60 minutes. Yeah. Like an accordion, if you will. Yeah, that's a good description. And then the final game of the night, this one shocked me. Number 24, Texas 34. Number 13, Kansas State 27. It's not the final score that shocked me. It is two things that shocked me. It's the second straight game Texas has gone a second half without scoring a touchdown, mm. and it's the fact that Texas had a 31-10 lead on yeah. K-State in Manhattan. In Manhattan, on the road for the Jayhawks. Steve Sarkeesian gets his second road win in his time at Texas. Only a second. 
What? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I think I picked K-State last week, just because Texas had not proven they can win on the road. But that was a big, big win for them. It, a huge win for Texas. Keeps it in the hunt uh, for the Big 12 Conference yeah. Championship game. And that's, to me, the biggest thing. If you want to show that last year was truly a transition year, mm -hmm. then you need at, at a school like Texas to be in contention for the conference championship game in year two. And that's where Texas is at. So I think the Steve Sarkeesian hire is proving to be a solid one. The question is, does it translate into the long term? That's a question that we won't have an answer for for, well, probably till Texas goes to the SEC. <laughs> That's probably right. No, you're right. But big win for them. Boy, they are playing well. I mean, they're a dangerous team. Uh, and they've got the big game against TCU this week. Baylor ends the season in uh, Austin against UT. Is there a quarterback that has a that takes advantage? And I don't want to say that as a bad way because if you you know if you're Michael Jordan and you have Scottie Pippen and Steve Kerr, yeah. take advantage of having Scottie Pippen and Steve Kerr on your roster. Is there a quarterback that takes better advantage of the way the roster is built than Quinn Ewers? Because I saw a stat, I don't remember the exact number, but his completion rating, at least in the past few games, has been under 60%, and yet Texas only has one loss in that stretch. Hmm. Uh, you know, when you've got B. John Robinson back there, yeah. you, you'd you be crazy not to use him. You right. know, use him to the extent that you can, and, and that's certainly a comfort, you know, for any quarterback, much less a young quarterback. To have a guy like that, you turn and hand the ball to him and get out of his way. And then the other part of it is he is a smart quarterback. So yeah. if he's got some of these, how many of these incompletions are put there on purpose because that way it's either his guy yeah. or nobody yeah. that can get to that ball because we've seen Baylor's quarterbacks do that and we've seen Hall of Fame quarterbacks in the NFL do that as well. Yeah. This is, that leads me into the Big 12 Conference Championship game race. Four teams still alive. It is TCU, very, very obviously, at 9-0, and number four in the country, according to the college football playoff. It is Kansas State. It is Texas. It is Baylor. And who uh, does Baylor have left on the schedule? All three. Baylor's three. the only one That's right. in those four to have to play all three of the, the others the rest of the way. That's right. Texas has two of them. Yeah. K-State has one right, of them. Right. Um, and TCU has two of them. Right. Here is my trivia time for you. Okay. Of those four, one of them does not control its own destiny. Ah. Which one is it? I only know this because we talked about it yep. before <laughs> we turned the cameras on. I would not have known it. And uh, I know Baylor controls its own destiny. Yep. I think the one that doesn't is Kansas State. It is. Yeah. K State has to win out. And Texas has to lose one gotcha. because if Texas and K-State both win out, yep. Texas has the tiebreaker. Yep, yep. How about that? Ranked number 13 in the nation. Uh -huh. Baylor not ranked, but the Bears do control their own destiny. And it's a tough, tough road to hoe the rest of the sure. way. Um, it's starting, I think, if my math is correct, a win in Austin Saturday night clinches a spot in Arlington for the Horned Frogs. Mm. Uh, you know, that'd be right because they'd be two games up on everybody with, with two, two to, to play. play. Yeah. And they would have tiebreakers. I mean, they've still got to play Baylor, but that would only be one. Yeah, I they, think you're right. They have tiebreaker on K-State. They have tie, They would have, at that point, a tiebreaker on Texas. Texas, that's right. Good call. So the magic number for TCU this year, or in the rest of the way, sure. one. They need one win in the yep. final three to clinch a spot in Arlington, yep. which I did not think we'd be saying this year. But, alas, here we are. Give them credit, man. 9-0. and One of four unbeatens now. Only four unbeatens in college football. One of four which is just tough to believe. All yeah. four, obviously, in the field when the college football playoff announced True. last night. Uh, it's top four. The other three being number one, Georgia, uh, Ohio State, and, of course, Michigan. Michigan. Yep. Okay, let's take a break from football. Let's push pause on that, and we'll come back to it in just a second. We're going to talk real quick about basketball because basketball season is officially underway. No notable matchups in the first two days of the season, but is there a result that shocks you? one way or the other and we can do one shocking good one shocking sure bad. uh yeah a couple of shocks from from monday the opening day number one oklahoma losing at home to jason hooten and sam houston state yeah how does that happen that buzzer beater was yeah. that that whole buzzer beating sequence yeah when you when you're up late in the game my high school coach always told me take the easy shot yeah. or don't take one yeah. the clock running is your best friend but if you miss a long shot 
guess where that rebound's going? Long rebound. Long rebound, yep. and that bodes well for the other team to get a fast break. Uh, that's how Sam Houston won it, a buzzer beater off of a long rebound on a missed three uh, from the Sooners. So I'm going with that as my shocking, yep. as, as shocking bad. I think we agree on that one. Good co-shocking uh, TCU won, but by a point over Arkansas Pine Bluff. So Baylor played Mississippi Valley State here uh -huh. and, and demolished them, you know, yeah. to be quite honest. But that coach, first-year head coach at Mississippi Valley State, came from Arkansas Pine Bluff. So really two of the lower, you know, and the RPI teams in the right. country. But they go in and they led by 20 over TCU. TCU wins it in the end by one. I, I tweeted this while you were on the air, so I'm banking on the fact that you haven't seen it. Do you know where – uh, Mississippi Valley State rates in Ken Palm? Uh, somebody told me. Are they next to last or fourth? Third. Third? Entering the season, they came in 361st. <laughs> there are 363 teams in Division <laughs> One. The only two that rate lower, entering that rated lower entering Monday, were Delaware State. Oh, and who's the other one? Um, it was another one of those right. low, low, right. low, like, low, low major schools. <laughs> like, I don't remember if it was a SWAC school or not, but the fact that when you're down there in those bottom three, right, right. and I could go find it, it just it skipped my head now. Um, but, like, you're ranked lower than schools that are traditionally sure. at that level in sure. Ken Palm in Chicago State yeah. and uh, Alcorn State whenever they have their bad years. And so, yes, Baylor did what it's supposed to do. Right. Hard to get a read on that game. Factor in the opponent. Yes. But even given that, I think Baylor did a good job on Monday. Yes. You know, because they didn't, obviously didn't play down to their competition and kept their foot on the pedal, led by 40 at halftime, led by as much as 65 and won by 64. So, you know, there's, there's little things in there that you can sort of judge even given the uh, level of your competition. Baylor had nine turnovers. That's it, nine turnovers in a game that was that lopsided. That, that to me is a really good sign. And when a game is that lopsided, you got to remember the starters are not playing a full right. 40 minutes in that. The big, the, one of the most impressive things to me was the instincts. Everybody's instincts were in full force on game one. Keontae George jumping passing lanes beautifully. And then you have uh, Flo Thamba playing very well in the post and just kind of playing naturally. Adam Flagler, LJ Cryer looking very natural as well. Langston Love was impressive in, yeah. his, in his collegiate debut. Yeah, and he's only going to get better. You know, he's playing with that knee brace on, and, and he's just going to get better and better every game. He's going to be, you know, he'll mix right in with that great group of guards. He will. My impressive good results is uh, Texas. Yeah. UTEP's UTEP, good. Right. UTEP's very good. And Texas beat them pretty soundly. Texas is good. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, there were some good, uh, you know, conference did what it should. They only lost the one game, the Oklahoma game that we talked about. Uh, so I think they did really good that opening day. Any result or any games that you're going to be paying attention to the final score this coming weekend, uh, the biggest games of notes uh -huh. are all Friday. Right. Only one uh, would be, and I uh, listened to Jerome Tang's yep. press conference after their win, his first win as head coach of the Wildcats. Congratulations, Coach Tang. And they talked about they're going to Cal, is that right, yeah, on Friday? going to Cal. And he said that's the only game he scheduled. The, the schedule was handed to him when he took the job, except for this one game he added so his guys could get a feel of, of playing a, a Power 5 opponent on the road in non-conference. So this is one he added to the schedule. And when you inherit a brand-new team that loses its best player to the transfer portal before you ever take the job, that's smart. That's smart coaching yeah, at that that's point. that's smart. Um, my biggest game that I'm watching is, uh, could I interest you in the backyard brawl on the hardwood? Oh, how about We've that? We've got West Virginia Pitt. I believe it's at Pitt this year. Okay. My, the reason this is interesting to me is neither one of these teams is picked very highly in its conference. Yeah. West Virginia picked ninth in the Big 12, uh, and Pitt is picked somewhere between 13 and 15 in the ACC. Um, but they could really prove something. It's a rivalry game. Yeah. And if West Virginia goes out there, beats Pitt by 20, are we underrating the Mountaineers going into the season? Mm. And it could happen. You yeah. know, Bob Huggins, don't underestimate Bob yeah. Huggins at all. So that could definitely happen. And the Baylor-Norfolk State game on Friday, that's the team Baylor saw in the first round of the NCAA tournament last yeah. year. So, you know, don't sleep on that. Don't sleep on that. That's a team that's going to be driven to get some revenge yeah. and could give Baylor, I don't want to say issues, but headaches. Right. Absolutely. Headaches right. on Friday. Right. Um, and then the uh, – 
I think he hit the – that was the, the other note I was yeah. going to say. Yeah, K-State and Cal. Yeah, K-State Or Baylor, Cal. yeah. Um, and the women are off to a good start. You know, the Baylor women won 88-50 to 50 over Lamar. And for the most part, the Big 12 women did really well. I think a couple of losses in there. Iowa State hosted Cleveland State, mm-hmm. a game that I switched on. You know what was really impressive was the way Iowa State mm. beat Cleveland State on, on Monday. And, again, you were on the air while you were doing right. this. The, the Cyclone women are very good this year. Mm. I understand now why they were picked to win the conference. Uh, and it's people basically getting away from the idea of, you know, everybody in sports is getting away from the idea of it runs through X city until right. it doesn't. Right, right. And the coaches proved that with the coaches' poll because when you've won 12 straight Big 12 championships, you kind of expect to get picked first, and yet you look at the poll and picked fourth. But the, every time I talk to someone in women's college basketball, it was always Iowa State's loaded, man. Iowa State's loaded, man. They showed it. Yeah. Cleveland State's not going to win a national championship. Breaking news. <laughs> but that was a really impressive win. Absolutely. They are loaded, and they've got Ashley Jones, and they are really good. And, you know, again, if Baylor's picked fourth in the Big 12 women preseason poll, that means the Big 12 is really, really good. Exactly. Um, okay, back to football. Baylor hosting Kansas State Saturday. Let's get into three big keys real quick. And, John, you can start. Uh, number one, uh, simply turnovers, takeaways. Kansas State is plus nine in takeaways. They're one of the top teams in the country. They've been, I think they've led the Big 12 all year in that takeaway category. Plus nine, that's huge. So you can't help them. And Baylor has been much better in that category with eight interceptions the last two weeks, plus six themselves. So Baylor is up to plus three on the season, which we were way down in the negative category. So with eight eight uh, interceptions in two weeks, that's really good. They've got to continue that, and they can't help Kansas State in turnovers. My first one is the defensive line, and the reason being for that is you have two dynamic run threats in the backfield yep. for Kansas State. One of them wears number nine. It's Adrian Martinez if he's healthy. Yep. The other one is Deuce Vaughn, the Round Rock native, who's playing 90 minutes from his hometown uh, and is lightning in a bottle. Like He is one of the best running backs in college football, and I feel fairly confident that I can say that and not get into an argument with anybody Agreed. who watches college football. Yeah. Um, you have to get you have to contain and you have to get pressure because if you let Adrian Martinez have too much time in the pocket, he'll beat you deep. And if you scramble him without any help on the outside, he'll run for 25 yards. Yep. And so the defensive line is going to be key. Agreed completely. And again, that defensive front that was so good against Texas Tech, those guys need to play like that or better on Saturday. They do. Yep. Key number two. Second thing for, uh, for Baylor is just continue to uh, run the ball well. You know, that run offense, when, when things are going well, the rush offense is a big, big part of it. And isn't it funny, it's been Richard Reese. Yep. He had the flu, got it Friday night. So they didn't have a chance. They didn't have a chance, you know, knowing he was going to be sick to work all week. Yeah. They thought he was going to be the guy, and he had been the guy the last two Friday weeks. Friday night. Yes. And so Richard tried, what do you have, four carries or five carries yeah. on Saturday? But we just kept seeing him run from the sideline to the locker room and finally were told or figured out that he was just sick. But Squirrel Williams back, first time in yeah. three weeks. Unbelievable. That's you know, the best game, game he's back. had in a long time. Unbelievable game, you know, especially considering how long he's been out. Mm-hmm. And he, except for the very smart play of diving to the turf late in the fourth quarter to just run the clock, he would have been right at 200 yards rushing on the day. Wow. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Yeah. And that he was a guy who looked a little timid at, at BYU, the first yeah. real physical team they played this season. He showed none of that in Oklahoma. Right. right. They needed him. I mean, it was basically Squirrel and, and Quaylen Jones were the two backs that were available against OU. If you looked at Quaylen Jones, you would never expect him to be the receiving back on this Baylor offense. Yeah. He's built like a tank. Right. Right. Uh, my second key, I'm going to go – Along those lines with the offensive line, not just the, on run blocking, but they've got to give Blake Shape and clean pockets. They've got to give Richard Reese, Quaylen Jones, Craig Williams clean, uh, clean yep. holes yep. on the run game. The offensive line, to me, is incredibly important in this game. Yeah, very much so. You could say that every game, but I think especially yeah. this week. All right, third one for me. Can I talk to our viewers right now and say home field advantage. <laughs> I mean, Baylor's played in Lubbock two weeks ago. That crowd, that wild, amped up crowd won that game. Played in Norman last week, 83,000 plus. Won that game. Now they're home and riding a three-game winning streak. Yep. This place should be packed to the gills. Yeah. 
But as of right now, as we record this on Wednesday, it's not. There are still tickets left, which boggles my mind because here's two teams that are tied for second in the Big 12, fighting for spots yep. in the Big 12 championship game. Baylor has to win, you know, to, to keep in that hunt. Playing at home uh -huh. against Kansas State. I mean, this place should be absolutely packed on Saturday. Tied for second in the tightest Big 12 at the top yes. since 2008. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, my third key is, I know I normally say this for road games. Right. But when you have Kansas State rolling into Waco, you got to weather the storm. Ooh, this is yeah. the, obviously, TCU and Texas are both still left. This is the best team that Baylor has played to this date in the season. Uh, yes, completely agree with that for sure. And uh, more challenges to come, TCU yeah. and Texas the next two weeks. But, it, you know, Baylor's going to have to play their absolute best this week. And that will include weathering the storm yeah. because, uh, you know, K-State's going to come at you. And, and it's, not, it's not like there's any secrets. You know, right. you sort of know what they're going to do. But they're so disciplined and so fundamentally sound at what they do that you've just got to, you know, it's kind of like a baseline uh -huh. game. You just can't get beat in the baseline game. And, you know, Dave, Dave Aranda and Jeff Grimes talk about reliable violent offense. Yeah. And you've got violent on violent yeah. <laughs> on Saturday because K-State <laughs> is just – I remember in 2019 going to Manhattan, Chris Kleiman's first year, I'm shooting the game on the field, and my bones hurt Yeah, right. because it was so physical right. in this game. And you factor in now K-State has found a quarterback who can run the ball better than Skylar Thompson could because as good as he yeah. was, he was not a dual-threat guy. Right. Um, man, that's – it, there will be ice baths on Sunday. Yeah, no question about it. Hard hitting game. No question this is going to be a four quarter game, mm -hmm. don't you think? Yeah. Between these two. And a hold here and a hold there is fine. Yeah. You can't have the pre snap penalties. You yeah. can't have those personal fouls. You can't have what most coaches would refer to as stupid penalties. Right, right. Absolutely. And Baylor's been much better in that area. Much, especially in the past uh, few weeks. Right. Let's go through the rest of the conference in, in this week. Back to five games this week. I'm taking. Baylor is a favorite in some of the projections, okay. which I find incredibly interesting. Yeah, I don't know what to make of K-State. I think this could be a, a repeat of K-State Tulane. I also think this could be uh, a re I, That's not the right repeat. I, I also think this could be K-State proving that it belongs in that top three like it did against Oklahoma State, but to a much lesser extent. Right. And how about, you know, their, their loss to Tulane early on? We thought, oh, my gosh, how do you lose to Tulane? Right. Well, they're, they've, they're a one-loss team. They may be the best group of five school in the country this year. Tulane holds the keys to the G5 <laughs> That's right. berth in the Cotton Bowl. That's right. And is the only team in the American that controls its own destiny yeah. to the AAC championship game. So looking back at it, not that bad a loss for K State. Loss at all. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to ride the hot hand. Okay. I'm going with Baylor. I don't feel great about it as some as, as a capital J journalist making a pick. Sure. I don't feel great about it. Right. I think this is a phenomenal football game. Uh, I'm going to steal a line from all the cable news networks and say this one's too close to call. For yeah. me. <laughs> I think you're right on that. Yeah. I'm going to take Baylor. I, I think the Bears are playing really well, coming home, hoping for a huge crowd here at McLean Stadium. Mm -hmm. I would take the Bears to win their what would be their fourth game in a row, you know, yeah. so uh, stay in the hunt to get back to Arlington. Uh, that game, 6 p.m. Central Saturday, Fox Sports 1, uh, or uh, if you live in Central Texas, right here. Come see us. Yeah. <laughs> 11 a.m. Central Time. This one's an interesting game. Yeah. Oklahoma and West Virginia on Fox Sports 1. Uh, what do you make of this one for the Mountaineers? Is this a must win? Uh, must for what? For Neil Brown? For Neil Brown. <laughs> for Maybe. Because to, I, as good as West Virginia is on the eye test this year, the results are simply not there. Right. And the powers that be that write the checks in college football – a lot of them care more about the results than the than the eye test mm, at times. Yeah, uh, I would take Oklahoma in this game. I, I mean, haven't too. seen them just this past week, and I think Dylan Gabriel really gives them a a uh, uh, huge spark offensively. And Eric Gray is really good. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I mean, we just saw them, and they're good. I mean, yeah. they are a good team. Their record doesn't show it, but they are really good. And uh, and West Virginia is just kind of scuffling right now. Yeah, they're they're in a bad way which is just weird to say whenever you watch this team and take the other factors out of the equation. 
Um, but I agree with you. I'm taking Oklahoma in this one because the last team that West Virginia played that plays like Oklahoma does – Beat them. Yeah. In Morgantown, yeah. where this game is, it was TCU. Right. Um, now, I'm not saying Oklahoma's TCU. Let me be very clear about that. 2.30, ESPNU in Stillwater. It's the Iowa suddenly <laughs> heating up Iowa State Cyclones. Right. Uh, and the also suddenly reeling Oklahoma State Cowboys, losers of three of their last four. Wow. All right, tell me, is Spencer Sanders going to play Saturday? Do we absolutely know? Absolutely no idea. Yeah. The shoulder injury makes me think he might be done for the year because mm. look at how many shoulder injuries there have been in college football this year. And if it's the same type as what Jalen Daniels and what countless other people had, Jalen Daniels got away without having to have surgery, which right. is why it's like, okay, when's he coming back? Right. Oklahoma State? or this weekend against, who is it, uh, Texas Tech this, this yeah. week. Um, and so I, I don't know, but if Sanders isn't in there, I'm taking Iowa State. I think so, too. Again, Iowa State is not a ba as bad a program as the record would indicate this year. And they're coming off a win over West Virginia, so probably feeling pretty good there, feeling better about themselves. So um, that's the X factor. Can we pick Iowa State? with an asterisk if yeah. Spencer Sanders doesn't because play. Because if Spencer Sanders plays, I think Oklahoma State wins I this would, ball game. I agree with that. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're both on the same page on okay. that one. Okay. Now we get into the night games. Okay. Three uh, of them. Three, yeah, three <laughs> night games. Uh, we've already picked the 6 o'clock game. That is K-State Baylor. Six, also 6 o'clock, this one on ESPN+. Plus. It's the bowl-eligible Kansas Jayhawks. I will be buying a shirt against <laughs> the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And, John, when you look at Tech's schedule the rest of the way, Still have Oklahoma. Still have. Um, I had it. They've already played TCU. They still have Oklahoma. They still yeah. have uh, Kansas. They have. Uh, they've already played West Virginia. They, they have Iowa K State, State left. Have they played K State? They play yeah. K State. Okay. So it must be Iowa State. Okay. Is this a must win? For yes. a bowl game? As they try to get bowl eligible, they're sitting at four right now, right? They need yeah, two more wins to be five. bowl eligible. So um, I, I would say that it is, you know, for Joey McGuire. And an odd year. So that means, I believe that means that they go to, um, or an even year rather. So I believe that means they go to Norman, which okay. is no easy task. Mm. And Tech does not historically fare well at Oklahoma. Um, I'm taking Kansas in this one. And. I've got questions at quarterback for Texas Tech, and it's no re not because of any lack of skill or any kind of mistakes. It's simply health. Yeah. Baron Morton's been hurt twice in the past two or three weeks. Uh, everybody, of their three starting quarterbacks, what, they've all gotten hurt at least once, some of them twice now? Like, they, it's a revolving door at quarterback that doesn't fare well for some of these teams. I'll take Kansas also, and, you know, I think kind of the pressure is off Kansas now. Yeah. Remember, they started 5-0. and so you're one win away from bowl eligibility. Loss, 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 and all of a sudden it starts building that pressure. Are you going to get a sixth win? Yeah. Now they've got it. You know, they got it next week. So I think they can just kind of play loose and easy, yeah. you know, almost almost playing with house money because right. they've got a bowl bid, uh, you know, coming their way. Um, so I would take Kansas. And potentially a really decent bowl game. Yeah. Although yeah. K-State's remaining schedule, it's already through most of it. This week is Texas Tech. Next week is Texas, mm. and they close with the Sunflower Meltdown. It'll always be the Sunflower Meltdown to me <laughs> after the Silvio <laughs> D'Souza incident. Uh, I'm yeah. not trying to make light of something bad that happened, but weird things always happen in this game, whether yeah. in the stands or on the yeah. field. And yeah. so that's their, that's their schedule to close it. There's a realistic chance that this uh, Kansas team is anywhere between 6-6 six, uh, six and 6 and uh, – Nine and three. Nine and three. Yeah. They could very easily win all three. Yeah. They could very easily lose all three. Right. I don't really know how to make it, but I agree with you. The pressure's off. Teams play better when they're not when when they don't have all the pressure. It's one of the reasons why Matt Rule, when in that 2019 Sugar Bowl season, always said, "Don't worry about the score. Don't yep. worry about the time. Just go play." Yep. Yep. That's good. And then finally, 6:30 p.m. Oh, yeah. on ABC. The Gary Patterson Bowl? The Gary Patterson Bowl. <laughs> it is number four TCU. It is number 18 Texas. I can't wait to see what Gene Wojciechowski gets Gary Patterson to say on college game day on Saturday. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure he'll only say nice things about his friends in Fort Worth. Um, and it's the game of the week in the Big 12. Really good game. You know, TCU under Patterson kind of owned Texas. Yeah. You know, the last few years especially. To the point where Chris Del Conte got absolutely <laughs> roasted by the Texas legislature when Texas announced it was going to the SEC. Right, 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 exactly. 
But uh, now Patterson, of course, not not the head coach at TCU any longer. A uh, what's his title? An analyst. I think he's special assistant to the head coach. There you go. Basically, he is Sark's like fourth down guy. I yeah. think is the what what has actually happened. But I heard Sark say this week in a press conference that Patterson is kind of like an advanced scout, also. Yes. Maybe looking at teams maybe a week or two weeks down the road. Mm -hmm. So he's probably got some really good insight that he can share on TCU. Now, how much does that apply right. on a game day, but maybe in advance it helps. Uh, it's a nice side story to what is a really, really good game. A really good game, and how much does, yes, he recruited a lot of Sonny mm -hmm. Dykes' roster. Quentin Johnston was a Gary Patterson recruit. Uh, their best defensive back, uh, Travis Hodges Tomlinson from Midway High School here in Waco, was a Gary Patterson recruit. But at the end of the day, neither one of those sides of the football is running the same stuff now right. as it did when Gary was there. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going with TCU in this one because Texas has not shown, yes, they defended West Virginia, which runs a similar offense. The cl closer comparison team to team, scheme to scheme wise is Texas Tech. Yeah. And Texas can't score in the second half. Two straight <laughs> games without a touchdown in the final 30 minutes. I'm, right. taking, I'm taking TCU. All right. I would, uh, I would agree. I would take TCU. I think Texas will come out guns blazing, but then can they hold on to it? Right. And I've told you this before, in, in complete honesty, I come at it from a Baylor perspective. Right. I hope TCU wins this week, uh -huh. you know, and then they have clinched at least a spot in the championship game. So maybe they let their guard down a little bit next week <laughs> when they come to Waco, yeah, right? Right. Maybe. What, so, As Bill Schoenig always said with the San Antonio Spurs, they see the world through silver and black glasses. That's right. <laughs> it's the way I look at it, green and gold glasses. But it, it could be a really, really good game. Texas at home certainly is, has proven to be much better than on the road, although they won on the road last week. Um, and, and they've got B. John Robinson, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. I think it'll be a really good game. And the last time these two teams met in Austin, I believe TCU won that one as well. And so, I mean, what's what's curious to me is if you had told me at the beginning of the season this game would have college football playoff influences, yeah, yeah, I would have I would have looked at you like you had three yeah. heads. And now it's like, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> that's it true. It really does. And how about this angle? People are looking at this from a TCU perspective, saying number four team in the college football playoff, this would be another ranked win for TCU. So it helps their resume, you know, if they can get the win over Texas. What a world we live in. <laughs> I know, isn't what that the truth? What a world we live in. <laughs> He's John Morris, coaches show tonight, 7 o'clock. Yes, sir. All Ryan. the six news streaming platforms. Yep, Ryan McGuire, volleyball coach, and Dave Aranda live from Rudy's. And then pregame Saturday starts at 4, four o'clock. And yeah. the Baylor tailgate show also right. at 4 o'clock, and yep. you can also watch that on 6 News and our streaming platforms. Appreciate it. Thank you. We will see you Saturday from right here at McLean Stadium. John, enjoy basketball. Thank you, Curtis. We'll see you Saturday. That's it for this week's Big 12 Breakdown.